I'm going to start with shoes because those tend to be just a little bit easier. Most shoes can be broken down into a few easy shapes because you kind of want to get the shape of the whole foot first and then you can draw on top of it. Right? So shoes can be broken down into an easy four shapes. For me, I always start with the ankle, right? So the ankle tends to be more of a circle coming down from the ankle. You can have a trapezoid for your heel. You can cut that trapezoid in half again on its side. You draw a triangle going off to the side. That's the middle of your foot for the shoe. And then your toes can be drawn as a semicircle. So you kind of get this shape. So feet and shoes, a general shoe shape is a circle you can draw for the ankle. A trapezoid can be for the heel. The triangle can be for the middle of the foot and semicircle can be your toes. The nice thing about using these shapes, right, is depending on how you arrange them, you can change the direction of the shoe. Right, so think of everything as a three-dimensional shape rather than just flat shapes. You can even curve some of them, right? These are just very, very basic shapes, but you can always change and bend them a little bit to match your pose. Stepping, then more likely than not, the bottom will be bent a little bit more. So let's move on to actual feet. So let's go into the general foot shape, right? It's actually not that different. It's just now we have to worry about toes, right? We have to worry about toes and the pads of our feet. So the shapes, very, very similar. Ankle is a circle, trapezoid for the heel, triangle for the middle of the foot. But now our toes are a little bit more like a rectangle instead of a semicircle. So your general foot shape. So that's kind of it from the side. From the front, that's when things start to change a little bit, right? Because in order to draw feet more correctly, we have to think of it in forms instead of just shapes. Kind of a pudding cup shape for your heel for the center of your heel you can think of it or the center of your foot you can think of it as kind of like a door wedge shape but the main thing to keep in mind because these will all also be rectangular prisms your big toe is the largest one with the rest of this rectangular thing left over right the rest of these are smaller you can cut it in half and then cut those in half again so now you got your toes but they should get smaller as you go down the line if i drew them from the top Right? So your big toe would be the largest. And then it would get smaller as you go down towards it. Cut this in half, and then cut those two in half. And the rest of these are a quarter. Okay, here's where it gets a little bit trickier. So it was already kind of tricky with this. Let's get a little bit trickier. The bottom of the foot uses different shapes as well. So the bottom of the foot, now we're gonna use different shapes. So we're gonna go back to using shapes instead of forms. I'm going to start from the toes. So the toes, if we kind of follow this method. You most likely have this section underneath your toes, right? If you want to get really specific, you can even cut it up more and have a big pad right here underneath the, the big toe. Do you need to add this? No, that's just a stylistic choice. I tend to add it in. But if you look at kind of the bottom of your foot right now, your foot, the middle of your foot doesn't touch the ground completely because it's curved, but it curves inwards depending on where your big toe is, right? So it curves depending on your big toe. And then your heel can just be drawn as a circle once again. For the big toe, think of it as a lopsided egg. That's how a lot of big toe shapes tend to be. Lopsided egg, and then there's a section between. Right? You'll notice, you kind of look at your toes, right? You have a section that actually touches the ground, but it curves. And then for your little toes, you kind of have a little circle and then it's the pad underneath. You can make this a little more ovular as well if you'd like. And then it gets shorter and shorter as you go downwards. Your pinky toes sometimes bend inwards though, depending on what kind of shoes you wear because sometimes your toes get kind of squished over time. Sandals can be a bit tricky because you gotta draw all the toes in and then you gotta like. Oh, one thing that I didn't go over, most feet, the bottom here should curve. The top here should also curve, right? So you could have like the, the sandal here and then you just gotta draw the straps on. I mean, this is a flip-flop. Depends on what kind of sandal you're going for, right? You gotta kind of just understand the nuance of whatever shoe you're looking at, right? So especially, so especially this shape, 
of the area that goes around the, the tongue. It's the one in the middle, that one. The ones that cover up the tongue of the shoe, this shape will change depending on what kind of shoe you're drawing. All right, so the combats will go back like that somewhat, right? And then sometimes they have this little heel section here. And sometimes they have a little tag on the back too. Dr. Martin's are very known for having the big tag on the back. How many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The big thing about you building up a visual library is finding the patterns that you see when it comes to drawing specific things, right? So for boots, so sometimes it's this back ankle thing. Sometimes it's not a circle or like a, an eyelet that they use, but a little catcher. For boots, they have these patterns at the bottom here. So these catcher things, you'll have every bit of the lace on the outside. Right? I'm going to do the laces off to the side for a second. So when you do laces, a lot of people will just do this, right? That's not how laces go. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. So if we have our eyelets, right, make sure that they're the equal amount on each side, right? So if there's four on one side, four on the other. So if it overlaps here, it'll go underneath when it goes to the next eyelet. You have to keep the pattern up, right? Because think of it as wrapping around this section. Right? It wraps around, so you're not going to see it go underneath here when it comes back out. All right, and then the last one, they'll both connect here. All right, and that means that the loose ones come out from underneath, like that. They always say to add seam lines to your clothes. The same thing can be said for boots, right? We have these little, this little section here, but you notice you can see the little stitching lines right? Don't forget those. And if you don't want to add the little stitching lines, at least add the extra lips of fabric, right? Because it needs extra support for the laces. So they add on another layer of fabric over here. But yeah, and if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. Be sure to check out the links in our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So platforms use, it's really just an extension of the bottom of the foot. You gotta keep the same kind of curve though as the bottom of the foot too, right? To kind of mirror it. Buckles, if you didn't know how buckles work, right? A buckle is not a square that just goes over the whole thing, right? Super cartoony, but if you want something a little bit more realistic, you're gonna have one side that goes over it, the other side, so it'll kind of be like a rectangular U that goes over that, and then a little anchor, the anchor point that goes inside the eyes or the circle or the, the holes of the belt, right? You can even have a thing here that like closes it up. That's what's happening over here. It's a little extra metal piece that closes it up. You don't have to add this. Not all belts have that, but you can add it up if you want that extra flare. Um, for the robotic shoe, robotic feet, just in general, the thing with robotics is you have to have a certain mindset where you understand how things connect and everything like that. One thing that I always do is like, I kind of look at how ball jointed dolls work and I work along that. But yeah, when you kind of work with anatomy, you can take inspiration from how certain things connect and how your joints connect and you can implement that into your robotic designs. Robots. All right, so I'm, my kind of thinking is that like it, it connects here and you can like rotate a little bit. With that, the heel protrudes a little bit further than the actual foot, right? So it goes a little bit farther out and it thins out towards the toes, right? You'll see that with a lot of like modern running shoes is that it kind of extends back there and gets pointed towards the tip of the toe, right? It's a very big pattern that you'll notice. These two sections up here and the repeated back emblem on the heel of the foot, right? There's another one of those tags. Okay. 
That's another kind of repeated thing that you might see with shoes is this little strip of color on the bottom. perspective foot. That just means I'm going to arrange the shapes a little bit different. Right? It's just understanding because this is kind of like a you can think of it as almost like a cylinder that gets closer to you, right? So this curves a lot. These circles are going to be a little bit flatter. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? So they kind of angle. You want to make sure that all of these are really curved when you draw a shoe from the front because you want to keep the curves in there. Sometimes I find it easier to do one side of the laces and then move on to the next one. With a heel, right, you're stuck with, especially if it's open toed, you're stuck with actually drawing the foot. In this case, kind of following the shape. All right, so with any heel, you're gonna wanna copy the, well not copy, but like the follow the curve of the bottom of the foot. Straps are another thing where you gotta kind of pay attention to how they wrap, right? So what I can see is that these actually go in like a, well, this one curves here. So what it looks like to me is that it goes in like an X like that kind of curves that way but of course we're only seeing half the shoe this is a common thing with heels is that they have this back thing for the support of your heel with wedges they have a little finishing wrap let me show you this little finishing wrap that goes around the edge the top of the heel here right so they have a little bit of a finisher so you don't see all the ugly edge that probably happens when they make the shoe. Check out our live stream replay, link in the description below. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss an upload. Join our art community with the links down below and support us on Patreon where you can download my working files like this one and get perks like classes and critiques. If you enjoyed this video, here's a couple other videos you can check out next.